Oh yeah, oh yeah. Public speaking, online. What's today? What's today? Presentation enhancers. In this lesson, you're going to learn about all different kinds of presentation enhancers, including their functions. We'll go over sensory ones, participative ones, and tech presentation aids. We'll also talk about best practices. Now you might be asking yourself, why the heck does Tara keep saying presentation enhancer instead of visual aid? And I'll explain. It's a matter of using inclusive language, which we've gone over this semester so far. So while visual aids are certainly one type of presentation enhancer, and one that you can use for this class, for example, a PowerPoint, they are not the only way to enhance your presentation. Using the term visual aid as a catch-all, in my opinion, privileges sight and assumes one that all members can see in your audience, but also that a visual aid is the prototype or best way to enhance your speech. So after teaching this class for a few years, um, I decided to change it. That's why. Now, on this slide, I have a bullet point list on the left and a pie chart on the right, each one detailing the functions of presentation aids. Both of these organizational tools show the functions, but which one do you prefer? The list or a pie chart? If the list, why? Is it because it's succinct and to the point? If a pie chart, why? Is it because it's colorful and helps showcase value for each one of the functions? In either case, it would be important to consider the preferences, even the learning styles of your audience when deciding how to design your slide or which presentation enhancer to use. Now, there are lots of functions, as we just saw on the last slide. Some of those include simply being considerate of your audience and who they are, but also, your presentation enhancer should enhance your actual speech content. It can even do the job of substituting for words, maybe if your speech is too long. It can add to the atmosphere, especially those that are sensory enhancers. It can function to draw in your, listen, or your listeners, stimulate interaction between you and the audience or the audience members themselves. It can really push or drive a point home, thereby increasing your credibility and also, let's not lie, help you stay on track. Now, there are lots of different types of presentation enhancers. So the first one that we're going to go over are those that are sensory types. Think about your senses. And after each one here, you'll see a few examples of different sensory enhancers you could use in order to engage that sense. So for example, if you wanted to show a visual aid, you could, for example, show us a map, a chart, a graph, or a photo. But again, visuals aren't the only way. You could instead use music or a natural sound effect and engage our sense of hearing and sound. If you wanted us to work with tangibles, you could use objects, peoples, animals, artifacts, um, maybe a model, or even give us a handout. Now, if you're doing a presentation on food, engage our taste sense. Help us follow along with a recipe or hand out samples of what you're talking about. For feeling, and this is more of feeling like an emotion, you could think about ways in which you could engage vibrations or use your language in a particular way to elicit an emotion that you wanted us to feel. And finally, smell. Using scents, food, candles. What other ideas do you have for engaging our senses? Now we want to talk about the second type, which we're calling participative enhancers. The next way that you can enhance your speech then would be to think a little outside of the box and really engage your audience through participation. In other words, make them part of your speech. This is where you take time out of your speech to include strategic interaction with your audience. So you might ask them real-time questions. You might invite your audience to even respond 
raise their hand, share back with you, give in the moment feedback. You may run a quick icebreaker activity for 30 seconds or two minutes and even ask them to get up, move around, shake hands, well, though maybe not this time of year. The goal is that you want to include your audience in your speech and this is another audience-centered strategy. The third type then are tech enhancers. And this is where you get to use uh, technology and digital means to really interact with and engage with your audience. So these take the form of maybe short video clips through YouTube, high resolution photos or images. You can even do a real live poll with your audience. Of course, you can use PowerPoint or presentation software such as Prezi, and this is just to name a few. There are so many other creative ways that you can use tech in your speech, from sound equipment to virtual reality, whatever you have your hands on and depending on your own resources. Now, I want to pause for a moment on those real-time polls that I mentioned. Real-time polls are awesome and a great way to get in the moment audience opinion or feedback and this is important especially if your sensitive if your topic is a little sensitive or might not elicit a lot of hands being raised for example using an anonymous real time poll helps get audience feedback in a very non threatening way this technique does, however, assume and kind of require that all your audience members have access to the tech you need them to use in order to participate. So just be aware because this is an audience equity issue. Now, many of you in this class will end up using PowerPoint, and PowerPoint is fantastic presentation software. In fact, I'm using it right now, as you can see. If you use it, though, do make sure to keep a couple things in mind, these best practices. First, slides are not meant to have a ton of text as you see here on the right. A good rule of thumb is to stick to seven by seven, seven lines of text with no more than seven, line, seven words on each line. Use simple text. Sure, you can bold your fonts and italicize them, but be consistent. And be sure to use titles on each one of your slides. Start with at least an 18 point font and larger if you can. And consider color theory. Did you know that the easiest font for the eye to see is actually a white font against a dark or a black backdrop? Maybe I should consider changing my own slides. Be sure to check grammar, spelling, you know the drill. All those things help with credibility. Now, of course, you don't just have to use PowerPoint or Prezi. You could also use Google Slide or a number of the free online resources that I give you at the end of the module. And here's some of those favorite resources of mine. Each one of these are free when it comes to finding and using images, for example. And this is just a short list. Flickr, Canva, Unsplash, Shutterstock, Pexels, and Stocksnap. So as I wrap up, I just want to give a couple more very general tips when it comes to presentation enhancers, some of which are actually my pet peeves. Now, if you're going to do something or show us something, for example, using a model, visual aid, or a photograph, make sure that you're introducing it, giving time in your speech to explain it, and letting the audience soak it in. Oh, and also, try not to block it with your hands or your body. Finally, keep your eye contact and interaction with your audience, not your presentation enhancer. I can't tell you how many times I've seen speeches where the speakers turn their back on the audience and instead prepare their recipe or look at the PowerPoint the entire time that they're presenting. Finally, what do you do if all else fails? Imagine you put together an incredible Google Slides presentation and the internet goes down or you can't get it to open or the file is corrupt. Always have a backup and this is where the sensory enhancers can really come into play. A soft, gentle music in the back of your speech can engage listeners almost as much as having them 
read through a handout. It really depends on the content of your speech. But no matter what you do, have a plan B. If you are using tech, test it ahead of time, even at work. Finally, get really creative. Sometimes things fail in the middle of the presentation. Maybe you've even seen that here on my digital lessons. Get creative and be okay with trying out some of your impromptu skills. I've been right in the middle of a speech when all the lights turned off. Use the environment to the best of your abilities, and that might also help you with that plan B. Also think about lighting, maybe even distractions like weather, temperature, other sounds in the room. Again, the best thing that you can do is have multiple enhancers ready to go just in case one fails. I hope today then that that gave you some more and creative ideas when it comes to how you can enhance your speech, whether you choose to do so in a PowerPoint, engaging our senses, being uh, participative, or using tech. Thank you.